So, uh, friends, um, our topic is prognostics in health management and how it affects or it connects to risk based engineering. You know, so prognostic and health management uh, vis a vis, it's a relation with risk based engineering. The moment we say that it is an integral part of risk based engineering. Um, so, uh, we have to see that relationship and we have to evolve also and what are the resources that are available to us that we have to see. Um, I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde and this lecture uh, is part of National Program on Technology Enhancement Learning, Enhanced Learning, sorry, uh, NPTEL, okay. And uh, we have, we are into our second lecture of 11th module that is Prognostics and Health Management. Uh, we will see the relation between risk based engineering, how it benefits risk based engineering and how uh, the uh, output of PHA itself benefit the, so both are is a mutually, this, this I think figure it will explain. Um, uh, the background is like this, that uh, in uh, when we do, implement, we want to implement the risk based engineering, uh, there are some uncertainties in terms of uh, 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 probability, uh, use of probability, probabilistic statement. But risk based engineering means I should have a reasonable idea about the incident of the failure also. So that component come, comes from uh, PHM. Now um, I use PHM, okay, and uh, then we have this uh, uh, risk based engineering output goes to PHM. So how it benefits PHM? It benefits PHM. Uh, because it is a systems approach, it benefits PHM by supplying a list of issues or priorities or identifications, you know, so that we directly attack the risk and in fact reliability also. Uh, reliability also is captured into the risk based engineering by a, uh, a paradigm we, can, we call it loss of reliability. So, risk to the reliability, the way we say risk to the safety, risk to the reliability. So, reliability also becomes part of the risk based engineering. So, then PHM module is there. In PHM module, we will choose what monitoring, what actions we have to take um, so that we have a uh, uh, for our implementation risk and reliability program on the shop floor in the uh, various areas of the plant. So, you can imagine the RBE module which was not, uh, more of analy analytical module uh, came to PHM module uh, wherein uh, we said that by R&D and by implementation we have made it a part of the uh, uh, complex systems and then we are uh, having benefit not only about risk but about reliability the way I explained you and its management is going on. And what it does is actually it makes the systems more uh, safe and reliable. And again there is a feedback loop, whatever improvements have been done, uh, for example let us say failure rates have reduced, it will go to the uh, risk based engineering module. And if reliability is more that means we are able to run the plant, let us say earlier our period was uh, um, 8 months or 7 months and then we used to experience a trip uh, or uh, interruption. Now it is going beyond uh, 1 year, 2 year and all that and uh, uh, I think you, uh, you must be aware that uh, in India itself some complex engineering system like nuclear plants they have operated for a period of more than 2 years. There was no PHM, there was no other, but then the basic philosophy of uh, preventive action and proactive action that was there, plants were being monitored closely, but then we do not want it to, uh, this phenomena to remain limited to one plant and some sort of a, you know, uh, one of the, uh, we want, this should be done by, so we, we require a technology. So that is how the PHM comes, uh, in a formal way it comes, uh, comes into the picture. So, um, having said that, what is the role of AI? Because AI is going to play a very, very important role. Uh, I would say um, AI and statistical approaches. Uh, 
because we do a lot of now pre-processing of data, feature extraction before we use our intelligent techniques. And in fact, sometimes these intelligent techniques also we use for feature extraction and uh, you know uh, for pre-processing. So there is uh, uh, use of AI along with the statistical approaches can be there anywhere uh, in the in the stream that we have call, called PHM stream. So. Uh, Architecture we will discuss and then predictability, prediction capability, um, we said that you know always it is not a very uh, holistic, uh, not uh, very optimistic scenario. Sometimes we have to sit back and fine tune the approach. So this is the background we have. We dedicated one module uh, on physics of failure. Okay, So that means we do not have to give a background of physics of failure. So in the remaining lectures, we will be talking about the data driven approach. For, for two reasons. One is that even uh, today uh, the data, data driven approach is become, though physics of failure approach is more promising, but in the present situation the data, data, data driven approach is showing reasonably good results uh, uh, in PHM. So, uh, but then uh, in fusion approach the POIF and data, data driven both are coming into picture. So, we have this thing okay uh, let us uh, he, see one slide here on physics of failure also. So, how it gets integrated with the uh, with the PHM uh, first first is life cycle expectation whatever is there then design data uh, that if you have and then in a, as a, you saw in physics of failure approach uh, failure mode um, mechanism and effect analysis and there we are in our model in risk based engineering we are using the criticality also because we are dealing with the complex engineering system and then POF model that will set the ball rolling for virtual life testing or life assessment ok. Uh, but here the question is our failure mechanism uh, or the failure model uh, should be which is a deterministic model more or less uh, that should be very appropriate. Uh, number one and number two the stress level whatever we assumed in virtual life assessment that also because in virtual life assessment we are doing at lab laboratory level but in the field there can be more than two three uh, uh, mechanism which are operating. So uh, uh, our virtual life assessment should be should bring out the synergy of various load or I would say stresses and the resilience of the system which uh, which uh, uh, fights against the various stresses then only virtual life assessment will be more proper and then we have system health prognostics you know so we but now we have model is there so it goes to the prognostic part and then um, life consumption uh, data also uh, goes here and then the existing sensor output see uh, we are having both monitoring of online thing also so that life cycle loads we are able to answer and then finally remaining life so, uh, uh, assessment in PHM life cycle logistic and cost model it goes as an input for uh, working out life cycle parameter and cost is of course uh, is a one of the integ integral parameter of uh, management of uh, any not only prognostic but even health management things also. So this is what the role of PHM uh, P uh, physics of failure approach in uh, PHM. Now, uh, the idealistic th thing is that uh, PHM should be done where uh, the integration is the uh, uh, is the is, is the is at the um, core of the PHM application. So, what is that integration? That means physics of failure approach and data driven approach they combine and 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 gives prediction uh, along with the statistical model and machine learning so what happens let's say this is a, again uh, aviation system they are considered complex engineering system uh, we have information on la, la, life cycle loads and all that so this goes for pof and life testing we perform okay and then physics of failure model is there with us and along with the statistical approach um, and machine learning but before that we have prognostic approach based on data. So, it is, so this is a POF approach, this is a data driven approach, they join uh, here is the data from the sensor, live sensors they are coming in, domain specific analysis is performed, pre-processing is done and feature extraction is done and then it is fed to the statistical modeling uh, and then uh, machine learning algorithm and 
uh, if you have the uh, uh, supervised learning, then target vectors are there and we give remaining useful life here. So here what is happening is both these things input they are coming and they are integrated at a statistical level and then fed to machine learning for RUL prediction. So this is what the approach comprised of. But actually, um, actually given the situation, uh, now we will be onwards we will be discussing about the uh, data, data driven approach uh, because physics of failure approach we have last uh, slide also we have discussed and uh, uh, so so uh, the next slide uh, what we will discuss is before we really discuss about concerns in uh, POA based approach why PA, POA based approach uh, people are finding it challenging to uh, use. Sometimes it is very easy, sometimes in some of the cases it is uh, really complicated because all the uncertainties have to be captured into the module. Um, now when we develop a POF approach, we consider, you would have seen in POF lecture, we consider a mechanism, we track that precursor to uh, you know uh, that failure degradation that is taking place. Uh, but then in the real life, it doesn't happen that way. There are many mechanisms operating and they can induce a failure mode. Okay? So um, just by having one mechanism, we might say we have taken the worst case scenario for a mechanism, uh, but then, uh, but then uh, our predictions are not going to be, uh, either it will be uh, a premature prediction will be there or you know it will be too late a prediction for anything uh, for uh, useful purpose. Now uh, we have considered damage is an additive thing but it is not necessary. Uh, in the real time scenario it several processes they cause it might become multiplicative also because one mechanism two mechanism they are interacting and they are making the severity so high that edit, edit, um, uh, additive model is not really working. So that means a lot of R&D is required, uh, how we can have a synergy of various uh, mechanisms they are, they are going on um, and given the load and the strength um, into account, uh, robustness of the component into account, uh, it may be um, of no concern or it may be of serious concern, but that only experiment can tell. Then the third issue, a latent failure, sometimes the latent failure they remain uh, latent all through the life and sometimes they are, uh, in fact it is difficult to capture if we have a lot of noise around. So and even if you are able to capture, um, we are not able to see how it will propagate and it is a challenge actually, especially for mechanical component. It, it might be good for uh, solder joints in electronics and all that or um, uh, metallization uh, on the board. Uh, we can see because we can have a visual inspection uh, also. We can have a visual inspection for magnetic, but then sometimes it is subsurface. So subsurface it is very difficult to see. Um, and then the failure of canary on safer side. Canaries are there for live monitoring, but canaries can fail. They themselves can fail. So if they fail, that is point number one. Uh, what? And second is if the canary introduces a new mechanism because what we do we saw in last lecture we use almost 12 holes on the board for canary purpose monitoring but then while doing so we did a lot of solder for sensors and all those things and so they should not induce any failure i mean this just one mechanism i told you but there are sometimes it has been seen <coughs> that the device which was installed to um, for some purpose, this that purpose got defeated because of the device itself. Okay, so uh, so this is just a phrase I told you. You can apply in many areas, and probably uh, you will be able to uh, get that. Then last, but catastrophic failure, PHM, POF, and all they are not meant for catastrophic failure. Actually. You know, because they happen suddenly. They don't give any time. And now take the scene of latent failure, and then. It was, uh, it was not visible and then suddenly it got converted into uh, critical, it got acquired the critical size and it failed. So 
these are the failures in PHM. So it is better to have a tab on data. So uh, I have given a small uh, example I am trying to map it on a nuclear plant. Um, we get data, raw data from the plant and then <clears throat> what we have data processing, pre-processing units are there. Okay? And then uh, what we do like how RBE and these are connected. So these data are about, can be about failure, can be about process performance, can be about uh, degradation, anything. And here the, the failure data goes to the reliability module, module and it gets converted into probabilistic estimates and uh, probabilistic risk assessment is there. So we get a statement of risk. So one input is available which is very vital for implementing the uh, PHM. Now the second one is <clears throat> we get some data, sensor data, now, now let us take Sensor data we are getting raw data, sensor data we are getting AI and ML. AI means artificial intelligence, ML means machine learning toolbox and then it gives an information uh, input for PHM and then PHM pr uh, predicts the remaining useful life. Okay? So we got statement of risk, risk uh, 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 RUL scenario we got and then again we got one more input which is a online data, instantaneous data from the plant wherein we have this. Um, so PHM is one thing uh, for the data which is live data coming from the plant, other one is operator advisory system. So we developed an advisory also, what kind of uh, advice should be taken or management to, uh, to be done, uh, it could be for PHM also, it could be for any other action. Then, so identification and diagnosis are performed by this module and finally advice is generated. So and we have decision making and feedback and this feedback again goes to the plant and uh, uh, I could re uh, read here that safety and reliability uh, assurance channel as a feedback uh, uh, is uh, works in a closed loop manner. Okay? So this is the interrelation between risk based engineering uh, and uh, PHM. <coughs> now since I was talking about a systems approach, uh, implementing a PHM uh, it is a very complex matrix. Even if you read one row, probably for the rest of the things we can understand it actually. So uh, categorization of SSCs has to be done. PHM is a very uh, resource consuming option. So uh, that means uh, we have to optimize uh, the parameters that we want to take it for PHM or component that we want to take for PHM. Uh, and where so that we, we have maximum benefit and ma maximum uh, increase in uh, uh, safety or uh, re reduction in risk and increase in reliability. So uh, different components uh, which are there, their categories are like this. The first is re reactor structure. So reactor pressure vessel, coolant channel and all. So, most of the components here will be sort of either semi uh, uh, you know uh, life limiting component, components. Okay? Some of the vessels can be replaced also but then I will say these are the actions they require a lot of preparation and you know. So uh, reactor structure I will put in one category, non-reactor structure, non-reactor structure, reactor structure means which is not uh, closely but containment they are structural uh, systems and civil structures, fuel uh, whatever other blocks are there, uh, they are there so they are put in one category. Then mechanical component, pump, wall, heat exchanger and all that, these things they are replaceable components, uh, replaceable not that frequently but maybe in a uh, period of 20, 30, 40 what, whatever but they are replaceable, they are considered replaceable component. Electrical power supply they are also replaceable component but they require a different approach like for if I talk about the electronics, electronics replacement uh, does not take too much. Uh, uh, complexity in the sense of uh, we have to replace the modules from the panel and put the new modules if we are not changing the monitoring philosophy um, like we are going from solid state logic to uh, digital logic uh, then little bit of changes are here and there but electronics are the one uh, which should be which should be re replaced uh, and the time frame for them could be 5 to 10, 15 whatever uh, but not like mechanical components of 20, 30, 40 years and all that. So this kind of uh, thought process should be there. Process instrumentation yes after electronics they are uh, relatively easier to nuclear instrumentation. So this chart I have made it for nuclear because I come from that background. <coughs> and then we have uh, this kind of categorization that means I am trying to assess whether 
PHM can work for them. So whether the uh, so here when I put four star, I'll say technology is available for nuclear power plant. Three star means technologies are required for the qualification specification, and uh, uh, two star means technology in the uh, infant stage R R and D is required and all that. So th these things I have converted. Let's say I am saying here we are uh, and various categories are for monitoring, uh, in service inspection, condition monitoring, diagnostics where they are matured and uh, you know where is module and all the abbreviations are offline monitoring, online monitoring, monitoring. So all these things have been given here. So I would say when you have a systems approach, a very good um, modular approach, approach is required and a strategy is required to ensure that the utilization of uh, PHM is maximum and we get benefit in a net benefit when because as I said, it is very expensive uh, proposition. So we should draw the benefits. And here, this is a complete uh, thing. And I'm giving the uh, remarks on various component systems, sensors, calibration, and all that. So where uh, wherever R and D is required, you know, and all. And this I got it from references. So um, my opinion is there definitely. But then it is all references that I quoted, and because this comes from my book, exact same references have been used there also, uh, you know. Now, how PRA, PRA probabilistic risk assessment, we had a uh, two module. So we don't have to discuss what is probabilistic risk assessment. But we have to discuss how it plugs in for um, risk-based engineering. So first, there should be connection between PRA and risk-based engineering. And then second, it should be uh, risk-based engineering, how PHM can. So this, it, this uh, understanding is very much required. So it gives system availability, unavailability core damage frequency, importance, important accident sequences, SSC important to safety, important human actions, uh, you know that. Uh, human uh, factor is one of the major contributing factor. Uh, this, this is general uh, perception, uh, but uh, my, uh, that consideration should be there. The, the human only made um, uh, conceptualize, design, operate, regulate, uh, maintenance. So, uh, human factor will be there everywhere. So, uh, this should not be surprising actually. But yes, there is a, uh, and be, because of system complexity, sometimes, or sometimes because of some design uh, limitation, uh, humans, they are, uh, they are found at the crossroad and th that's why. So, it's a very complex thing. Uh, then confidence limits also comes from our PRA only. Input for level two PRA. That's okay. So th this is what the connection, and we have here all these slides. How it works in PRA initiating event, safety system unavailability, event tree analysis, fault tree analysis. These things we have discussed in our. Um, if somebody is want, they can go back to our module on PRA, and uh, how it becomes part of risk based engineering. The things are very clear in the over there. Now, once R RB is there, risk-based engineering is there, how PHM is connected? So, I am bringing a connectivity uh, right from risk to uh, risk-based engineering and then PHM. So, these are the inputs that we get from the plant. Uh, so, uh, if we have failure data and all, they go to risk-based engineering. Probabilistic data and all these things, they form part of here. Precursor signal from plant, they become uh, part of identification of so once this precursor is, uh, data is coming here we found, find precursor signature for PHM okay and then uh, what happens at PHM level um, even uncertainty module gets plugged in over here and with the given uncertainty we have available time and safety margin okay so once I have predicted something then planning action and prediction of life remaining useful life I would say and then finally, it goes back to the, into the risk-based engineering and again it works and uh, forms in the closed loop and the same input goes to the plant also. So, it will get reflected over here and that is how they are working in an integrated manner, plant, plant input, risk-based engineering and PHM. So, this is a, uh, this understanding was very important so that we can appreciate why PHM should be part of risk-based engineering. So, uh, we have seen uh, uh, here that uh, it is a systems approach. So, we discuss system and PHM in an integrated manner, role of PHM in a risk-based engineering. Uh, we were trying, because we showed aviation system and nuclear plant, probably we wanted to have 
the canvas for this key from one plan to uh, another plan the issues are similar when you when it comes to implementing phm and then uh, uh, role of pof how it is limited that also we saw and how data driven approach is actively being pursued uh, even though pof is promising yeah so we are commenting here formally okay and categorization of ssc that we saw here in one last but one slide and with this we conclude our uh, talk on rbe and phm now next lecture will be there on major ai and ml techniques for phm thank you very much